Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 23 in my Overly Scienced series. Now this video is from a recommendation in the comment section. Tyra Elpol, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, put in some suggestions here and I've decided to tackle the hot steam vent. So doing some research takes me to Tony Advance channel where he uses bead pumps to extract the steam and prevent the hot steam vent from overpressurizing, because that's the main problem with any hot steam vent tamer. I don't really like bead pumps. So then that brought me to this channel where I found this design where he uses steam turbines on the side with doors to extract some of the heat from the steam before it enters this final turbine here. That way you're not running 500 degrees steam through this central turbine. Otherwise you'd be wasting a lot of that heat now, this works, but if you have a steam vent that produces a lot of steam, then this won't exactly work, because this steam vent can overpressurize, because this one steam turbine can't keep up with the output. So my design here is kind of a hybrid of everything. And there's a lot going on, but it's actually pretty simple when you take into consideration what needs to go into a steam vent tamer. So some numbers here. This steam vent produces 4,300 grams per second during its eruption period, which is a lot of steam. One steam turbine can't keep up with that, right? One steam turbine can only do 2,000 grams per second. So this, with the central steam turbine, wouldn't be able to keep up. This steam vent would overpressurize. So you need to add more turbines if you have a vent that's making more steam. Now the problem with that is that you have to cool the steam so that you don't run these turbines over their 850 watts, or you could block some ports on the turbines. But if you block ports on the turbines, then you need to add more turbines, and then the build just gets really big. So I opted for cooling off the steam, and I achieved that through all of these pipes here. It starts with the steam vent. It will output 500 degrees steam. The temperature shift plates and metal blocks here are gonna suck up a lot of that heat from the steam and cool it off before it enters the turbine. The turbine then sucks up that colder steam, doesn't waste any of the power because the steam is colder, and then runs it through this shutoff first. If the shutoff is enabled, then it's gonna go up through here to these four valves and then bridge over the steam turbine exhaust and come down into this room down here to cool off the steam that this vent is outputting. And then it's just mirrored over on the right side. These valves are all set to 1000 grams each, that way you don't get any broken pipes. This thermosensor is the very minimum you could ever set these thermosensors to uh, without causing a stall is 128. And there's so many different values you can get here that it's kind of impossible for me to tell you exactly what to set these to because your steam vent is going to be different. I have another one set up over here that produces a lot less steam. That's like only half and these can be set a lot warmer. So moral of the story there, the more steam you your steam vent produces, the cooler you have to set these to and you kind of just have to move it around until you find a good sweet spot. You don't want to set them too low otherwise the vent can overpressurize this room down here, and you don't want to set it too high, otherwise when it starts back up, these turbines could be deleting some extra heat. Now what are all these metal blocks doing here? Well, because these turbines can pull a vacuum in this room, you have no more mass left in this room to soak up the heat from the steam when this starts erupting, so all of these blocks here are actually submerged in supercoolant, which has a really high specific heat capacity, which is important in stabilizing the temperature of this room. Now, if you're doing this more in the early game, you could substitute the supercoolant for petroleum. And you don't want to let the petroleum go across the entire floor, because then these thermoregulators will be submerged and they won't function properly. So I have these airflow tiles separating everything. So you could fill up this area with a lot of petroleum or supercoolant and not use so much petroleum here. Now, the automation overlay looks like this. And these thermoregulators, I didn't really like the fact that I had to use regulators because they're kind of 
power inefficient, but you know, late in later stages of the game, you don't really care about power, so the these worked, and they just run a loop of hydrogen. Hydrogen is the best gas to run through a regulator because it has the highest specific heat capacity. Same with uh, supercoolant through a aqua tuner. So I'll let this run here, and you can watch it. This erupts. It outputs steam into this room. It's immediately cooled by everything in here. The turbines suck up that cooled steam, and it runs back down through to cool off any new steam. So if you find this room overpressurizing, and this starts, uh, and the steam in this area gets above five kilos, then you're going to want to increase the temperature on these thermosensors here. That way you're extracting more of the steam instead of sending it back down into this room. So there's a balance between extracting steam and sending the exhaust back down to cool off the new steam. And I found that this is a really good sweet spot here for this one, after testing it for 30 cycles or so. And then this one over here, you may notice that it's actually... There, there's six blocks here and five blocks here. This is how small you can make it. This was an accident when I made this one block too tall, but ignore that. This one is identical. The only difference here is the setting on these, and that's because this produces a different amount of steam. And since it produces less steam, I can extract the steam at a higher temperature. Now the materials you want to make these metal blocks out of, you could use iron, it doesn't really matter. Iron, steel, copper, aluminum, they'll all work. And then shift plates, you could again use iron, copper, steel, aluminum, those will all work. On the thermoregulators, these do need to be made out of steel, otherwise they will overheat if you make them out of something less durable. There's a bypass down here, so that when the regulator isn't in use, the hydrogen can still circulate. And then when it is in use, it does use up one of the bubbles. So you need this a buffer here out of these bridges so that you don't get a clog in the pipe. So we can see this working here. This over here, it almost gets to the max output. Right, the steam here is 190, but it doesn't go over. That's important. You want to balance that with the, the steam pressure in here using the temperature on these. What I found to be the most important part of this whole thing is actually these metal blocks with the supercoolant to stabilize the temperature. That gives you a lot of room to be wrong on these uh, thermosensors here. And one thing I should point out, these thermosensors, while the steam vent is in its active period, you'll notice that this room up here heats up. That's because these regulators cannot keep up with the heat produced by these turbines. But in the dormancy period, as long as you have enough mass up in here, then that acts as a thermal buffer. So it gives these regulators time when the vent is dormant to catch back up. If you didn't have these uh, shift plates in here, or if you used some, th some gas with a lower specific heat capacity than hydrogen, you might end up in a scenario where this room gets too hot too quickly, and then these turbines would stifle. And so you'd need some other way of cooling them off. So the way I solved that problem was just putting in 20 kilos of hydrogen and putting in a bunch of shift plates. And then these aqua tuners will catch back up. And same goes for this one down here. So to give you an idea of the steam vents you might be dealing with, um, this 4.33 kilograms, that is this vent right here. So this is really the max you might run across. And so you'd, pro you'd have to set the temperature on these pretty low. Now it looks like more standard is about two kilos here so on your thermosensor you'd probably be around 170 like i have on this one over here and then if you've only got a steam vent that produces 1.7 kilos a second you could probably bump this up closer to 180. but there actually wasn't a lot of math i needed to do to come up with this design after looking at all of the other designs and playing around with uh well my first thought was to have a steam turbine straddle uh, two steam rooms, because you can actually run steam that's colder than 125 through a steam turbine if one of the ports, at least one of the ports, has access to steam that's above 125. So I was thinking I could do maybe two turbines that have access to the hot steam and then a wall with a steam room over here with colder steam, but that ended up being really complicated and this actually 
this design turned out pretty well. Um, it fits every steam, steam vent you can come across. All you have to do is change the setting on these thermosensors here. And this is pretty elegant, I think. There's not a lot of complicated game mechanics involved. And if you don't use super coolant here, you could get one of these up and running pretty early in the game, actually. Now, I want to go over setting up one of these in survival, because it's not as straightforward as you might think. When you put everything in here to begin with, it's going to be at a maximum of 45 degrees when these buildings are built. And so it's going to take some time for everything in here to heat up, which means when this steam vent finally erupts, there's going to be a lot of water. You're going to have to get rid of that water before it starts to vaporize into steam. Otherwise, you could end up in a scenario where you have a bunch of steam in this room that is too cold for these turbines to extract it, but there's too much pressure for this steam vent to erupt to let out any more hot steam that could then increase the temperature of the steam that's in here. So if you can catch the steam vent when it is dormant, put in the petroleum and supercoolant, and then run these thermoregulators to heat up the petroleum here, you'll get a nice heat battery in this area, so that when the steam vent does erupt, the steam is going to touch the cold shift plate up here, condense into water, fall down, touch the hot petroleum, and then evaporate back into steam. So you want to preheat this room. That's one alternative. And then the second one that's a little less elegant you could throw in a pump around here, maybe, with a, a double liquid lock, so that your dupes can get in and out to access it, but no heat can leak out. That way you can just pump out any of the water that condenses, but that still doesn't solve the problem of the steam that's below 125, but there's too much pressure for the steam vent to erupt. So I think at that point, you would have to rely on the thermoregulators or preheat your supercoolant and petroleum before you put it in. That might be the hardest part, is getting the whole thing set up and going in a survival map. One last thing you could do when you have the uh, double liquid locks is put in a gas vent, and you can just pump out any of the steam that's too cold, or if there's too much pressure in here, you can reduce the pressure so that this steam vent can erupt, heating this area back up. So just some things to think about when you're setting this up in your base. So I'll give one last look at the plumbing overlay here. And then one last look at the automation overlay here. And then when these shutoffs are blocked, the water just runs out over here into this where you can collect it and do what you want with it. That's about all I wanted to cover in this video. It's short, sweet, to the point. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.